Hey there, it's Ella from the Spline Team. Happy spooky season, everyone. In this tutorial, we want to show you how to harness the power of fog in 3D. Fog can create spooky, epic, and mysterious atmospheres and effects for your design. So let's get into it. Now let's start with the basics. How do we turn on fog? Well, this is super simple. Make sure that you have nothing selected in your scene. A quick way to do this is by hitting the escape key and then go up to the right hand panel and turn on fog here. Right away, it's a little too intense, but let's go check out the settings. The first thing you can adjust is the color of the fog. You can have it match your background color or apply a custom color. For now, let's have it match our background. The fog is a bit much right now, so let's turn it down by adjusting the near and far values. The near and far values are used to change the depth of the fog. The closer both are to each other, the thicker the fog's transition is going to be. So that's pretty much the basics of the fog. A great way to use fog in your scenes is by using it to create atmospheres for your landscape, mini world, platform scenes, etc. This will create a sense of depth and help enclose your world, making it a bit more immersive. A great example of this is using it for mini games, like this mini game where we fly from the POV of a plane. We can't really see the end of the world because the fog is there. It's giving us this complete world feel that is more immersive. And here's another example of a game made in Spline. In this mini game, we are jumping from platform to platform on these different various floating rocks. And the fog here is really enclosing us in this world, just making it that much more immersive. So a great way to use fog. But what are some other ways that we can use fog in our designs? What about on our landing page? I have this 3D skull that emerges from the fog as the landing page loads and then the skull has this look at interaction applied so it's always looking at my user's cursor which I think is such a cool effect. Let me show you how I made this. It's actually quite easy. So the first thing we need to do is take a skull from a certain wizard's lair. It sounds difficult, but I promise it's pretty easy. So this is the Spline library. All of these designs are commercial free for you to use for any project that you know you might want to use them for. So make sure to explore and check out all the designs in here. So let's go right to the environment section and here you will see wizard's room. Let's open that up. Here we have our wizard's room. This is such a cool, spooky design, perfect for Halloween. And there's a ton of other objects in here that we could use. You could use a magic potion, try using the cauldron. It's really easy to copy and paste objects from spine files to another, which is exactly what we're going to do with this skull. Select the skull, hit Command C, and let's open a new file in spline. Let's start by deleting the default rectangle and then paste Command V our skull into the scene. Now you can right click on the layer and go down to reset position. One more time and go down to reset rotation. Now our skull is positioned perfectly in the center of our scene. The next thing I wanna do is I'm just going to zoom in a bit here and let's change the materials. I'm quickly going to be adding a matte cap layer and I'm going to use this blue matte cap right here. I'll leave the blend mode on normal and I'm going to drag this just above the color layer. Then for the Fresnel layer, let's change the color here to blue so it more so matches our matte cap. Maybe a little darker. Nice. And then for the Fresnel layer, let's just make sure that this is on screen. And then for the lighting layer, we can increase this to, to anywhere between 80 to 100. 90 is looking pretty good. All right, so that's the materials that I applied to the skull. The next thing I did was set up my camera. Now cameras are really important when you are exporting your scene to be used in a project, say for an app or a website. How your scene is viewed through the camera is how it will be appearing on your website or your app. So let's click on use this camera. And now I can see that this is exactly how we're gonna be viewing our skull. 
So I'm going to click on the skull and I'm just going to scale up the size by holding down shift and dragging. This is the size I want my skull to appear on my website. Now the next thing you want to do when working with your camera, once your frame is set up and you are happy with it, make sure to lock your camera so you don't accidentally move it. Now I can't orbit my camera as I'm editing because it is locked. What you want to do is head over to the viewport and select personal camera. Now we can orbit. The next thing to do is add our fog, which you probably already guessed. So let's turn on our fog and I'm going to say yes on use BG. Perfect. I'm just going to adjust my camera so I get a better idea of what I'm working with. And the idea here is that I want the fog to be just kind of hiding the edges of the skull. And another thing I want to do quickly is change the background color. So as I'm changing the background color, this is also going to be updating the color of the fog. I'm going to change this to a dark blue, something in this world. I also want to suggest as you're applying your fog to use the camera that you're going to be using for the website, just so you see exactly what the camera sees and your fog adjustments are perfect. Now let me go back to fog and keep adjusting here. It can take a minute just to figure out exactly where you want to position your fog. So I'm pretty happy with this. As you can see, the near and far values are quite similar. So I have the fog pretty thick around my skull character. So now let's apply this emerging from the fog effect. Select the skull and what we're going to do is add a new state. Really quickly, I'm going to change to my personal camera. I'm going to look at the profile of my skull. And in the base state, I am going to move the skull all the way back over here. Go a little bit farther. Now if I go back to camera, which you can just click here, use this camera, we can't see our skull anymore because it's hidden by the fog. Clicking back on the skull here, going to the state, we can just use the position values here. So we can go to Z and just put zero. Now we can see our skull. Let's toggle between the states, hidden behind the fog, and now it is emerged from the fog. Let's add our transition event here. I'm going to use a start event, add my transition. We're going to go from base state to state. And for this, you can use any transition type like linear or ease in, but I really liked how spring looked on this effect, almost like the skull is jumping out of the fog at you. So what we can do is adjust our settings here. So for mass, I'm going to have that at 20. For stiffness, we're going to have that at 100. And for damping, I had it at 95. I found the just default settings was just a little too springy, where this just gives a smoother transition. So that's pretty much all we have to do. Let's hit preview. And ta-da, our skull is emerging from the fog. Pretty cool. Now it could use a little more interactivity. So to do that, let's add another event. And this is so easy. Go down to the look at event. I didn't change any of the default settings, but feel free to explore them. Let's hit preview. And voila, our skull has emerged from the fog. Looking pretty good. So now I'm feeling like the skull is a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is in this state is I'm going to actually decrease the size of our skull just a bit, maybe to be more in like this. And then I'll match that to the base state just to make sure they're the same. So there's no size change in our transition. Yeah, I think that's feeling a lot better. And one more change I want to make is I'm not loving this blue color for the background anymore. It's feeling too saturated. So I'm just going to drag this down to make it even darker. And we can even add a little more. Ooh, that is so spooky. We can add even a little bit more fog on our skull. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We still have the nice 
tampering off here on the sides where the fog is starting to consume the skull, but we also get some nice highlights on the face. I'm really happy with how that's looking. Woo! Now the next thing we're going to do is head over to export and in play settings, let's turn off orbit pan and zoom because we have this look at event interaction already happening. So we really don't want people interacting with our design in any other way. So just turn those off, hit update public URL. Let's try it out. Awesome. It's working so well. Now, before we export, I just want to make a quick call out to the effects. So the effects panel, we can turn it on here, has a variety of different settings that we can play with. For this design in particular, the vignette adds this cool darker edge to the outer frame of our design, much like you see in photography or videography, adding to that spooky feel. And there's also the bloom setting which just gives our skull face this nice glow to it. But something to keep in mind when it comes to effects, use them sparingly because they do add to your file size, which will affect your loading time. So if we go to the export panel and over to performance, here under performance, you can click run test, and this is gonna tell you how fast your scene is going to be with your loading time score. But this scene is very optimized for the web. You also get opportunities down here that will just tell you about ways you can clean up your file to save on space and increase your loading time. So we can delete this default color that was a color asset that I wasn't using. So really handy and super easy to use. So let's close this. Always hit update public URL anytime you make a change. And now we can simply copy our embed and head into Framer. So here I've set up my website in Framer. I already have my embed component ready to go. If you don't know where to get the embed component so you can embed your 3D from Spline, it's just under the utility option here and then you can just drag and drop that into your scene. Super easy. So click on your embed component and over here, you can paste your HTML code, which I just copied from Spline. And voila, there is our 3D ready to go. All right, let's take a look at our site. That is so cool. I love how the skull emerged from the fog towards my cursor. And it was pretty easy to make. That's a wrap for this tutorial. I hope we inspired you to try using fog in your next design. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.